Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Alicia Michelson, and I am the Artistic Director at Peninsula School of Art in Fish Creek, Wisconsin. I am honored to introduce our newest artists in residence, Ellie Anderson and Sarah Willidson. Ellie and Sarah are with us for a total of six weeks in an immersive studio experience that prioritizes time and space for them to engage fully in their practice, experiment, and pursue new projects and ideas. Today, we have the opportunity to get to know each of them through brief image presentations. First, we'll hear from Ellie. Ellie is a mixed media artist based in Lansing, Michigan. Her work dwells at the intersections of observations of the natural world, reimagining societal systems, sustainability, and ecofeminism. In the process of making, she reflects on stillness, gesture, and the act of mending. Ellie sees her work as a site where a patched collection of interconnected moments can coexist. Her work was most recently exhibited at the Muskegon Museum of Art in Michigan and the Maryland Federation of Art. Ellie currently works at the Michigan State University Broad Art Museum as an Education Programs Fellow. Take it away, Ellie. Great. Thank you so much for that introduction, Alicia. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ellie Anderson, and I'm really excited to share a bit more about my practice and my artwork with all of you today. So I first wanted to start with this piece. Um, it is titled In Between Then and Now. Um, I am thinking a lot about time and memories and my experiences with family and with nature. Um, something that you will learn throughout looking at my pieces is that um, it a lot of it starts from this basis in stories and memories that I had as a child. Um, this piece I started with wash, washes of blueberry dyes and for, it's a very common within my family um, to go blueberry picking together in Northern Michigan. Um, and so I was thinking more specifically about that tradition, um, that's dye specifically when exposed to sunlight will kind of wear away over time. And I was interested in that and thinking about that in comparison to memories. Um, I also use a lot of found materials in my work. And so you will see this really large green piece um, comes from the thrift store. And I really like the idea that this was used as a blanket, most likely before this, and that's seen as a symbol of comfort um, and warmth to someone. This is a little bit of a closer look at this piece. You can see the different details that I have. Um, there's lots of different fabrics that are woven together. Um, this purple material is another crocheted piece that I found at a thrift store and was an unfinished project. project. And I really liked the idea that I was collaborating with this unknown artist. Um, and that their work would live on within this piece um, and thinking about that relationship as a whole. And also in this piece, you'll see there's lots of different woven fabrics also collected from thrift stores um, and they are dyed using blueberries and blackberries. Um, down towards the left, you can see kind of this yellowish color and that comes from pomegranate skins. This is another piece that is exploring similar themes. Um, this was one of the first pieces that I created incorporating natural dye, which has now become a big founding piece of my practice. Um, and this piece in particular is thinking about my grandmother's property up north. Um, for each person that is born in my family, my grandmother plants a pine tree. And I think I look at nature and life and relationships and symbols of nature and um, and I'm really grounded within that. And so the dyes that are used in this piece um, all connect to either that property up north 
um, or specific memories. So there is blackberry and raspberry dye. My grandmother grew blackberries in the backyard, and that was a specific memory for me growing up. Um, and then there's also washes of dyes from pine cones that I've collected over time. Similarly, in this piece, I'm thinking about how my life is connecting to nature in specific ways um, and how that can even happen in little moments. Um, some of the paint that I experimented with making comes from turmeric and paprika. And um, I like the idea that this is something that I'm using in the kitchen, but then also something that I'm using within my practice. Um, and I like... I enjoy the way that that forces me to, to look at the world as a whole. This is another piece that was rooted in collection and um, different experiences. This idea for this piece came from going on a walk in the woods where I found this um, rotted away log that was like this beautiful red and like orangey brown colors um and so I brought a piece of it back with me and kind of ground it up um and incorporated that into some layers of paint um which is very experimental but I was really thinking about just that like stumbling upon something in the woods um looking at the world closely and how important that is to me um, this piece too, in general, has a lot of gestures that I think relate to like the human form. Um, this is titled Pink Roses Grow From My Skin. And I'm thinking about just kind of these, this inner connection as a whole. And I wanted to share these Im images with you all because this is some of the research that is happening um, behind the scenes. And so I'm interested in thinking about these interconnected moments with nature and my personal experiences. Um, I also am thinking about that on a macro and micro level. So a lot of the pieces that you just saw, I feel like they are almost like a topographical view of a map of some sort. Um, so a very like wide lens. Um, well, this is photographs that I took of pine needle, pine needle cells. Um, and while looking at them up close, I couldn't help but think about how connected these, fe these feel to fabric and, um, woven materials, particularly the one on the left, um, which is like a cross section of the pine needle. Um, and then the one on the right, I kept thinking about these circular forms and how repetitive they were, um, much like the pine trees that my grandmother plants around her property, they form a circle. Um, and so that visual motif has been incorporated now into my practice. So I have been working more sculpturally, and I think you can see a little bit with the woven piece that's in the center, just this connection to those images um, and research that I was doing um, and thinking about the cells and interconnection in this larger circular hole that that forms. I'm also interested in seeing um, where I can find, again, those mo visual motifs within my everyday life. Um, and so the, the wood piece that you see was collected again on a walk. Um, it sat in my studio for many years until it was the right time, I think, to use it. And then this yellow piece, um, I think a lot of us can recognize, just comes from um, a bag of lemons. Um, but I think within a fine art context, we can see that this is really like a woven structure, um, although made from plastic. And I was really interested in that. So again, working a bit more sculpturally, um, this one specifically, I'm interested too in how these visuals can really connect to things that we find in nature. Um, this one is titled, I'm Spinning My Web. Um, and how that can really, how this fiber and fabric can, and yarn that can really 
connect to that um, visual motif that we see within nature. The last piece that I am going to share with you um, is this sculptural form. Um, and this one, I was thinking about the when you cut a piece of wood and the different rings that you find um, and how those represent different years of life. Um, and so to me, I see the yarn as these different rings that represents the different years that we've lived. Um, and they again come back to the trees that my grandmother planted on her property and thinking about the ways that we are connected to each other and to nature as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Next we have Sarah Willardson. Working mainly with paint and various collage elements, Sarah's work explores concepts of abstract spaces and objects guided by her surroundings. Sarah earned her BA in studio art and graphic arts from Lakeland University and MFA in painting from Northern Illinois University. Her work has been featured in New American Paintings and she shows frequently in regional and national exhibitions. Sarah currently works as a visual artist and graphic designer in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Let's hear from Sarah. My name is Sarah Wilson. Um, I work mostly with mixed media and found materials um, and to create envir environments and structures. So this first piece from 2020 is a good example of the work I started making about seven years ago. Um, I really became drawn to shaped painting surfaces that have a softer look to them. So I started stretching batting and canvas over shaped panels to work on in the studio. And I really found these these surfaces to be quite challenging, um, especially when you don't really have a plan for them, which I work very improvisationally. So I go into a lot of pieces really without any plan whatsoever. So I also used to create a lot of shaped panels with open spaces, and I would rely on the shape of the panel to guide the environment that's depicted. Um, this minimal hallway was created with an old shirt of mine. Um, and painted tissue paper that I had created during a residency at a farmhouse in Indiana. Uh, during my residency here at Penn Arts in 2022, I documented a lot of um, buildings and places around the, in Fish Creek and the surrounding areas. And this is probably the most direct use of one of those reference photos. Um, this is a piece that I had struggled with for years. So there are a lot of layers underneath those final um, paint marks. Okay. In 2020, I began trying out different collage methods, including one where I collect three to nine different collage um, elements of the same color, put them in order by size, turn them over, and glue them, starting with the smallest piece first. This leaves a lot of room for chance and also limits some of the choices I get to make. And once everything is glued together, I turn the piece over and see the result. So all the collage pieces in this piece were created with that method. Um, so I made that and then I had a shaped panel that I was wrestling with finishing. I just couldn't couldn't figure it out. And so once I adhered this bigger collage to the panel, it all came together. So this is another piece I created during my residency here last year. I was starting to go back to a more central structure in the composition and taking a lot of time to consider each addition to the piece. While working in the studio here last year, I fabricated quite a few shaped pieces using foam instead of wood, and this is one of those pieces. I also incorporated a lot of the collage material I created here. This piece is one I had been thinking about making for quite a while as I had been wanting to collage with multiple soft elements, and this allowed me to learn a lot about what works and what doesn't as far as materials go and how work like this can be presented. So in September of 2022, I went to Sanker, Scotland for a week-long collage residency. Um, and our goal for this residency was to learn about Sanker lore from a book we were given, explore the town in person, and then make collages responding to these stories. So this collage is responding to one of the many stories we read about witches that lived in the area. And this is a larger work on canvas that I completed earlier this year. 
I had pushed this piece too far many times with a lot of mark making and collage elements. So there are a lot of layers on this as well. And I created that, I realized that I needed to bring some order to it with a consistent perspective and some solid areas of color where the eyes could rest. And I also recently finished this larger three foot by three foot piece that had been previously something else I created maybe five years ago that I just wasn't content with. And I see myself moving back to this direction a lot more with a central structure and really building that building in it and around it with paint and collage elements. Thank you, Sarah. It was a pleasure to hear from both of our artists today. Toward the end of their residency, we will be hosting an in-person end of session studio tour. If any of you tuning in are in the area, I hope you will join us and see what Ellie and Sarah have been working on during their time with us. In the meantime, please follow us on social media for more about these incredible artists. Thanks so much.